pray to Sri Ramakrishna to purify our hearts. Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Tats Om Stapakaya Chadamasya Sarvadharma Swarupine Stapakaya Chadamasya Sarvadharma Swarupine Avatar Varishtaya Ramakrishna Yate Nama Asatoma Sadgamaya Tamaso Majo Dirgamaya Asato Masadgamaya Tamaso Majo Let us bow down to Sri Ramakrishna, the embodiment of all religions, the Supreme God incarnate. Let us pray to Him to lead us from the unreal to the real, to lead us from the darkness of ignorance to the light of knowledge, to lead us from death to immortality. We have been studying chapter 28 in the Gospel of Sri Ramakrishna. Here we have all the spiritual instructions meant to be practiced by the sincere spiritual seeker. If your goal is to reach God, if your aim in life is to see God, then you must follow these instructions carefully and practice them. In the last few classes I have dealt with the subject how to get oneself free from the ego, the root cause of all suffering and misery. We had discussed sufficiently long enough. Today I am taking up another very important topic stressed by Sri Ramakrishna in the Gospel, that is, inner struggles. You must be aware of what you are doing. That is the purpose. Sri Ramakrishna said to other, a great devotee, he said, always keep your mind on God. Every word is important here. Not sometimes I keep your mind on God. No. To that extent, your journey in spiritual life is shortened or is met with obstruction, I should say. The journey would be incomplete. When he says, always keep your mind on God, that means your mind should be dwelling on the name of Divine God. 
Then he says, in the beginning you must struggle, struggle a little. Later on you will enjoy your pension. So Sri Ramakrishna is suggesting here that everyone will have to struggle in spiritual life. Without struggle, you can't reach your goal. That's the idea. Ma Manusmara Tasmad Yudhyacha Lord Krishna says in the Gita the same teaching which was put in new form by Sri Ramakrishna. What Sri Krishna has said in the Gita is Remember me always Ma Manusmara Remember me always then fight. That's what we have to do here. Struggle means fight. You have to fight. You have to fight. You have to win the battle. He said to a devotee, Sri Ramakrishna said to a devotee, all people are by no means on the same level. It is said that there are four classes of people. The bound, the struggling, the liberated and the ever free. So struggling there is a class of people who are struggling for higher life. During the period of struggle, Sri Ramakrishna said, one should follow the method of discrimination. Not this, not this. And direct the whole mind to God. He said to another devotee by name Mukherjee, he told him, I am just giving the words of Sri Ramakrishna, what he has said in the gospel, then I will start my topic and struggle. I am preparing the ground so that you are well set. Some have heard of milk, some have seen it and there are some besides who have drunk it. Here Sri Ramakrishna is suggesting stages, different stages. Then he says, God can indeed be seen. What is more, one can talk to him. These are the words of Sri Ramakrishna, who himself talked with Divine Mother. So you can believe hundred percent what Sri Ramakrishna had said. Not only that, he made his disciple to talk to Divine Mother, proving that one could talk to God. So you shouldn't have any more doubt about that. You shouldn't have any doubt about the existence of God, first point. You shouldn't have any doubt about seeing God and talking to God. These are very important in your spiritual life. Very, very important. The first stage is, the stage of the beginner. What it does? He studies, keep on studying books after books. I have read this book, I have read that book, this, that, this, that, goes on, ad infantum. 
and hears studying and hearing that's the first stage never conclude he has studied lot of books he is a very great man great man from the point of view of studying the books i understand but what about the experience that's only the beginning shri ramkrishna says next comes the second stage very important stage that is struggling struggling your aspiration comes to test when you are entering to the second stage of struggling during this period what does he do he prays to god he meditates on him he sings his name he sings his glories he tries to keep his mind on god that's the second stage the third stage is that of the perfect soul once you have passed through this passed through the struggling then you reach that third stage where you can see god you can talk to him you can have direct experience that's the final result shri ramakrishna tells there is another stage extraordinary stage stage of the supremely perfect like chaitanya mahaprabhu a devotee said to shri ramakrishna sir we follow the ideal of king janaka people are very fond of using the name of janaka do you know why because people are always engage in some kind of work you know they want to philosophize it they want to put vedanta into whatever work they do you must call it yoga then they become very happy shri ramakrishna says mere words don't make a king janaka have you studied him how much asterities he did in solitude king janaka that means how much struggle he did mark the point struggling i am coming to that point afterwards so shri ramakrishna is telling you do something first what is that first struggling struggle in a positive way then you may become janaka without struggling you can't become janaka janaka was very great king no doubt a great karma yogin his name comes in bhagavad gita also and shri ram krishna gives an example very nice example you see a man writing english fluently i am all telling the words of shri ram krishna only <laughs> now i am putting you on the track slowly screwing up properly <laughs> on the topic <laughs> a man is writing english fluently but could he do that at the very start no because probably he was the son of poor parents he was cook in a family and his meals he could earn by his service he had to go perhaps through lot of struggles which is studies it's after all these efforts that he can now write such fluent english struggling 
a music teacher used to come uh, to our home when I was a boy. He used to sing very well. And I asked him casually, Sir, how nicely you sing. How much practice we have to do to learn one song thoroughly. He said, you have to repeat the song at least 300 times. Then it becomes perfect. That means, how much struggle you have to make. Don't think without, without any struggle you can become a great musician. Simply having a voice and simply opening the mouth, uttering something is not a singing. <laughs> you have to follow all the uh, fine sentiments in singing. Then only it becomes beautiful and melodious. Again, one devotee, his name was Priya. He said to Sri Ramakrishna, Master, mind is not under my control. How many people tell this? Even now people keep on telling. Future also they keep on telling. Even the next creation also people tell. Mind is not easy to control. These questions exist permanently. <laughs> anyway, answers also are there. Sri Ramakrishna replied, Well, there is such a thing as Abhyasa Yoga. Sri Ramakrishna's words, I am telling, Yoga through practice. That is struggling. Whatever you have to do repeatedly, it implicates struggling. Keep up the practice and you will find that your mind will follow in whatever direction you lead it. The mind is like a white cloth just returned from the laundry. It will be red if you dip it in red dye. It becomes blue if you dip it in blue dye. It will have whatever color you dip it in. Sri Ramakrishna is telling this idea. This idea has been given by Lord Krishna in the Bhagavad Gita. Asam Shyam Mahabaho Mano Durnigraham Chalam Abhyase Nadakaunte Vairagya Nadakrihyate Arjun no doubt the mind is restless. I know it is very hard to control. Lord Krishna says. But then he said, by practice and by detachment, it is possible to restrain the mind. So, this is the preamble for my topic today, struggling. So struggling plays a very, very, very important part in everyone's life. How did a person become a saint? Do you think he became a saint overnight by some magic? Somebody touched him, he became a saint. It's only after going through much inner struggle, then he has finally won victory. Saintliness presupposes a hard inner struggle fought to the finish. That's the point. Everyone will have to pass through the channel of inner struggles, especially if you are trying it to live a spiritual life. These struggles vary from person to person. All the same, all have struggles of a more or less similar nature. Or rather, struggles issuing from the common human nature. Those who deliberately strive for spiritual self-betterment 
feel the rigorous of this battle more than those who are devoid of spiritual aspirations. Even among spiritual aspirants, some are involved in these struggles suddenly with total unpreparedness and suffer a great deal. They are confounded. They are confounded by sudden blows. They fail to find any way out. After vain struggle for a while, they give in, battered by those forces which they did not know how to control or counteract. Some spiritual aspirants, after an initial reverse, somehow learn the battle rules and gradually get the upper hand over the negative forces within. They learn through trial and error. They learn through a lot of wounds. But they learn well. There are some, through the grace of God and Guru, pass through, pass through these struggles more or less easily. Then, when they feel somewhat smug, they find themselves all of a sudden in the vortex of an undeclared war. Inner struggle, being inescapable, it is necessary for every spiritual seeker who wants to reach the goal of life to know how to conduct himself in this unseen warfare. The question may be raised, since we are already involved in struggles, what then has to be learnt about them? The answer is, it is one thing to be somehow involved in a battle and quite another to know how to fight. If we are involved in it, knowing how to fight well, we have fair chances of victory. Otherwise, defeat is inevitable. How do we prepare ourselves for the battle? Next question. That means entering into spiritual life means you are preparing yourself to fight. You are preparing yourself for the battle. In the first place you require to keep the whole phenomenon of inner struggles in perspective and to develop a proper attitude toward them. Secondly, inner struggles being facts of spiritual life, they have to be accepted as such in a non-sentimental matter-of-fact manner. And we must clearly understand the character of the forces in operation. Thirdly, we must remember that no one can wish away or permanently avoid inner struggles. They cannot be ignored. Fourthly, Inner struggles will have to be faced. One of the ways of getting the upper hand in inner struggles is to face them squarely and dexterously. That is the meaning of coming to battlefield.
fifth point there is no way of flying away from inner struggles by change of place or situation in life wherever you go they will follow you ne you carry them inside you all the time as in the struggles causes much suffering there are very often these struggles are looked upon as curses why i have to pass through all these troubles maybe i might have done some past bad karma so i am having to pass through all these struggles so many of the people that think them to be some kind of curse that is totally wrong in view of inner struggles and a self defeating one there is nothing pernicious in inner struggle but something very precious the unanimous verdict of all the mystics of the world is that these struggles are to be deemed potent blessings of god very important point many among us is may not yet be persuaded to accept in the struggles as blessings in that case we may accept them as meaningful and powerful challenges to our manhood or womanhood challenges which as true spiritual aspirants we are found to discover them and accept them. we must also remember that it is not a compromise or a kind of harmony with our lower nature that we are aiming at but conquest complete conquest if we know the technique of fighting given the required patience our victory is certain these battles have to be accepted and gone through not only for surviving not only because they cannot be avoided but also because there is no other way of growing up in spiritual life do you want to make any progress in spiritual life face the challenges face the struggles that's the point and the question may be raised why at all have we to suffer this inner strife when our intentions are good and our aspirations for spiritual life are so genuine sincere and irreproachable this question may be answered from two different points of view one from psychological point of view and the second from religious point of view first we shall study the psychological point of view of this question in general terms the psychological explanation is this man is curious amalgam of dust and deity of animal and divine of the forces of darkness and the forces of light hence in every human being there are two natures lower and higher the lower nature of man is a fact of experience the higher nature of man is also a fact of experience the lower nature tries to assert itself and drag us downward 
the higher nature also tries to assert itself and pull us upward so there is constant strain between pull and push that is going on in everyone's life pulling and pushing what we are trying to do when we deliberately take to spiritual life is to assert the deity over the dust the divine over the animal and the forces of light over those of darkness this causes the inner strife when we live the life of ever increasing compromises and always submit to the demands of our lower nature our strife is not so great or may be totally absent because then our higher nature is more or less screened off from our awareness many people they talk when you speak of spirituality oh swami let me pass to some experience in the world when i get to 70 or 80 years then let me take up spiritual life my duties are over i am at rest my family is good children are good well placed they got good appointment everything financially everything is sound then i will take care of my spiritual life he is simply living in dreams he can't expect that way of life at all but our extremely powerful lower nature being all the time well fed and cultivated that's why they have become very powerful never gives up without a terrific fight to the bitter end that is the lower nature this is why at one stage the greater the intensity of the life of the spirit the more fears become the inner struggles there is no cause for surprise or alarm if after taking to spiritual life you have found that your inner struggles have increased this is as it should be don't be frightened by the struggles don't be frightened the more the struggle the greater the awakening provided we live through those struggles dexterously that's important a truly awakened seeker will welcome his inner struggles as logical concomitants of his efforts to reach the goal to resent inner struggles is a wastage of mental energy and it hampers progress so this is how we should tackle the topic struggling entering into spiritual life means we are passing through the channel of struggles everyone has to pass through that channel that's the point and i will continue the topic next tuesday page 550 About five o'clock that afternoon, Sri Ramakrishna was in his way to Calcutta. M. Mahendra Mukherjee and a few other devotees accompanied him in Mahendra's carriage. Thinking of God, the master soon went into an ecstatic mood. After a long time, he regained consciousness of the world. He observed that fellow Hazra. days teach me the rascal 
After a short pause, he said, I shall drink some water. He often made such remarks in order to bring his mind down to the sense plane. Mahendra to M. May I get some refreshments for him? M said, no, he won't eat anything now. Master still in an ecstatic mood. I shall eat, he said. Mahendra took the master to his flour mill located at Hathi Bagan. After a little rest, Sri Ramakrishna was to, to go to the theatre. Mahendra did not care to take him to his own house, for the master was not well acquainted with the father. Priyanath, Mahendra's second brother, was also a devotee of the master. Sri Ramakrishna was sitting on a cot over which a carpet had been spread and was engaged in spiritual talk. Master said to him and others, once while listening to the various incidents of the life of Chaitanya, Hazra said that these were manifestations of Shakti and that Brahman, the all pervasive spirit, had nothing to do with them. But can there be Shakti without Brahman? Hazra wants to nullify the teachings of this place, referring to Sri Ramakrishna. I have realized that Brahman and Shakti are identical, like water and its wetness, like fire and its power to burn. Brahman dwells in all beings as the Bibhu, the all pervasive consciousness, though its manifestation is greater in some places than in others. Hazra says further that anyone who realizes God must also acquire God's supernatural powers, that he possesses these powers, though he may or may not use them. Yam said, yes, one must have control over these supernatural powers. All love. Master said smilingly, yes, one must have them in one's grasp. How mean! He who has never enjoyed power and riches becomes impatient for them. But a true devotee never prays to God for them. Sri Ramakrishna washed his face. A smoke was prepared for him. He said to him, Is it dusk now? If it is, I won't smoke. During the twilight hour of the dusk, you should give up all other activities and remember God. Saying this, he looked at the hairs on his arm. He wanted to see whether he could count them. If he could not, it would be dusk. About half past eight in the evening, the carriage with the master and the devotees drew up in front of the store theatre on Baden Street. He was accompanied by M, Baburam, Mahendra and two or three others. They were talking about engaging seats when Girish Chandra Ghosh, the manager of the theatre accompanied by several officials, came out to the carriage, greeted the master and took him and the party upstairs. Girish had heard of the master and was very glad to see him at the theatre. The master was conducted to one of the boxes. M sat next to him. Babu Ram and one or two devotees sat behind him. The hall was brilliantly lighted. The master looked down at the pit and saw that it was crowded. The boxes also were full. For every box there was a man to fan those who occupied it. Sri Ramakrishna was filled with joy and said to M with his childlike smile, Oh, it's very nice here. I am glad to have come. I feel inspired when I see many people together. Then I clearly perceive that God himself has become everything. Yam said, It is true, sir. Master, how much will they charge us here? Yam said, They won't take anything. They are very happy that we have come to the theatre. Master said, It's all due to the grace of the Divine Mother. The Chaitanya Leela was about to be performed. It was a play about the early life of Sri Chaitanya, who was also known as Nimai, Gaur, Gora and Gauranga. The curtain rose. The attention of the audience was fixed on the stage. The first scene depicts a council of sin and the six passions. On a forest path behind them walk Viveka, 
vairagya and bhakti engaged in conversation. Bhakti says to her companions, Gauranga is born in Nadia, therefore the uh, Vidyadharis, demigoddesses, the Munis and the Rishis have come down to earth in disguise to pay their respects to him. She sings, Blessed indeed is the earth, Gora is born in Nadia. Behold the Vidyadharis coming in chariots to adore him. Behold the Munis and Rishis who come allured by the spell of love. The Vidyadharis, Munis and Rishis sing a hymn to Gavranga and adore him as an incarnation of God. Sri Ramakrishna watched the scene and was overpowered with divine ecstasy. He said to M, Look at it! Oh! Sages said, O Keshava, Bestow thy grace upon thy luckless servants here. O Keshava, who dost delight to roam Vrindavan's glades and groves. Goddesses, they said, O Madhava, our mind's bewitcher, sweet one, who dost steal our hearts, sweetly playing on thy flute. Chorus, chant, O mind, the name of Hari, Sing aloud the name of Hari. Praise Lord Hari's name. Sages prayed, O thou eternal youth of Braja, tamer of fierce Kaliya, slayer of the afflicted's fear. Then Goddesses prayed, Beloved with the arching eyes and crushed with arching peacock feather, charmer of Sri Radha's heart. Then the sages chanted, Govardhan's mighty lifter, thou, all garlanded with silvan flowers. O Damodara, Kamsa's scourge. Goddesses chanted, O dark one, who dost sport in bliss with sweet Vrindavan's gopi maids. Then chorus, chant, O mind, the name of Hari. Sing aloud the name of Hari. Praise Lord Hari's name. As the Vidyadharis sang the lines, Beloved with the arching eyes and crushed with arching peacock feather. The master went into deep samadhi. The orchestra played on, but he was not aware of the outer, outer world. We shall stop here. So, when you come to Sri Ramakrishna, I feel you are coming to real spiritual life. To follow Sri Ramakrishna means to follow his instructions clearly, without compromise. Never yield to weaknesses, never yield to lower nature. Don't get yourself overpowered by your lower nature. Never give way to your outbursts. Never give way to your emotions. Never do anything that degrades you to the lowest level. You must always be aware you are constantly being pulled down by lower nature. If you yield to them, they know the result. It drags you to the brutal level. One becomes brute when he degrades in his lower nature. Be very careful. To come to spiritual life means you must always be watchful about your lower nature. That's the important message. Everything you have to put into the basket of struggle. Struggle courageously. You will be able to come victorious. Ma Manusmara Tasman Yudhyacha. Constantly remember me and fight. Lord Krishna says. So, let us fight our lower nature. Then we rise up to the higher nature. Then we see God. Simple. First is, that's called struggling. You don't want them, but they come and poke. They will interfere. You want to meditate, 
you want to see shri ramakrishna you want to concentrate you want to forget shadripus but they won't forget you because you yourself said vasana sam samskaras are constantly pulling you down why did they pull who gave that power for them to pull down you yourself have given that power how because of your own actions all this all through the life previous lives or whatever it is you have fed them i told that in the course of my talk you have fed the lower nature to such an extent that they have, you have made them strong and then you want to get away you can't do that easily that's the point so you have to weaken them first of all you must make them weak then then you can get rid of them before making them weak simply if you put force it won't uh, affect because they are more powerful they know you are not strong enough so when you are trying to uh, uproot them they uproot you they uproot you totally i have seen many people they start up with spiritual life they cannot cope up with struggles they become worse than the people who live in the world that's what i told when you yield to lower nature the lower nature is just waiting for that once you you are dragged into that they will push you downwards so that you go to the level of the brute that's why you see so much of uh, uh, violence and crime and so many things going on because of the brutal level there is no satisfaction for the lower nature it wants to enjoy more and more but it can't do that so it it forces upon the nature to get its self satisfaction that's the way that's what i told abhyasa yoga constant practice constant struggle that's called abhyasa constant struggle vairagya and all other things are very good they are all important i am i am see why i am pressing upon the struggle because i am coming to the i am pinpointing to struggle of course you need vairagya you need so many other factors you need so many help also practice also you need some other help that's a different issue but i am fixing i am pinpointing so that you may not divert your attention on the on the topic of struggling you have to struggle without struggle no spiritual life no magic in spirituality if there is any magic it is not spirituality that's what i want to say i appreciate magic good there is so many places are going on in the world magic is also one of the play <laughs> that's all how does the guru's grace come how do you recognize the guru's grace unless you pass through the channel of struggle guru appreciates you guru shows his grace only when you are trying to practice it if you simply keep on hearing until you swami ji you use your yogi power you touch my head and say swami brahmananda ji one of the swam one of the devotees asked him that the same question do you know what brahman ji said brahman ji said very clearly he you know he is a saint he is a man of realization he said look this moment by touching you <coughs> can make you free these are his words by just touching i can make you totally free mm. but he said but you lose the joy of struggles joy of struggles that's what brahman ji says wait wait when i come when i stop it then i will so joy of struggle that means the guru wants the disciple to struggle a bit huh not simply jumping see when the children want to learn something the parents they give him slate pencil and show how to uh, draw the figure etc etc <coughs> and they they enjoy the child trying to practice everything but if you don't give room for that simply you jump oh my child is smart child let him go to fourth standard first two standards are not required that's not good for the growth of the child so the struggling struggling that's why i told in my introductory talk i said struggling plays a very important part in spiritual life spiritual life means 
you have to pass through struggles struggle meaningful struggle in the world also they they have to pass through struggles nobody is free from struggle but what i am saying there it is meaningless struggle what you are struggling in the world utterly meaningless stupidity i should say but if you struggle in the spiritual life it is worth struggling it's worth struggling you are rise, trying to rise up through these struggles there you are going down in that case the struggle is pulling you is pushing you towards it down towards downward nature where here the struggle lifts you up from the lower nature to the higher nature so struggle has both aspects negative and positive the negative aspect is the more you run after the worldly things that is negative aspect of the struggle when you run towards god when you more feel more and more taste of joy in spiritual uh, practices that's called the positive aspect of well we shall stop 9 o'clock chant the name of the lord and his glory unceasingly that the mirror of the heart may be wiped clean and quench that mighty forest fire worldly lust raging furiously within o name stream down in moonlight on the lotus heart opening its cup to knowledge of thyself o self drown deep in the waves of his bliss tasting his nectar at every step bathing in his name that bond for weary souls various are thy names so long in each and every name thy power resides no time so set no right so needful for chanting of thy name so vast is thy mercy how huge then is my assuredness who find in this empty life one heart no devotion to thy name o oh, my mind be humbler than a blade of grass be patient and forbearing like a tree take no honor to thyself give honor to all chant unceasingly the name of the lord o oh, lord and soul of the universe mine is no prayer for wealth or retinue the playthings of lust or the toys of fame as many times as i may be reborn grant me o lord a steadfast love for thee a drowning man in this world's fearful ocean is thy servant o sweet one in thy mercy consider him as dust beneath thy feet o oh, how i long for the day when an instant separation from the o lord will be a thousand years when my heart burns with this desire and the world without thee is a heartless void prostrate at thy feet let me be unwavering devotion neither imploring the embrace of thine arms nor bewailing the withdrawal of thy presence though it tears my soul asunder o thou who still has the hearts of thy devotees do with me what thou wilt for thou art my heart's beloved thou and thou alone o lord lead us from the unreal to the real lead us from darkness to light and lead us from death to immortality may all be free from dangers may all realize what is good may all be actuated by noble thoughts may all rejoice everywhere may all be happy may all be free from disease may all realize what is good may none be subject to misery may the wicked become virtuous may the virtuous attain tranquility may the tranquil be free from bonds may the freed make others free may good be died all people may the sovereign righteously rule the earth may all beings ever attain what is good may the worlds be prosperous and happy May the clouds pour rain in time may the earth be blessed with crops may all countries be freed from calamity may holy men live without fear may the lord the destroyer of sins the presiding deity of all sacred works be satisfied for he being pleased the whole universe becomes pleased 
He being satisfied, the whole universe feels satisfied.